Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing. One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing is a 1975 theatrical release. It's directed by Robert Stevenson, cinematography by Paul Beeson, editing by Peter Boyda, and it's written by Bill Walsh. It's based on a book called The Great Dinosaur Robbery by David Forrest. The film stars Derek Nimmo, Nemo, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Peter Ustinov and Helen Hayes. Derek Nimmo was most known for being silly upper class British roles. He was an all gas and gators, pretty big British star. Peter Ustinov I cover in the Robin Hood video and Helen Hayes I cover in the Herbie Rides Again video. Both links will be in the description if you wanna learn about them. There's a restaurant in the film called The Reluctant Dragon, which is definitely a callback to the film The Reluctant Dragon. It's a great movie. I highly recommend The Reluctant Dragon more than this. And the dinosaur skeleton they use in this film also makes an appearance in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. This movie is awful and there are a lot of reasons why it's awful, but there are two big ones and it's whitewashing and cultural appropriation. So instead of talking about the movie, because I don't really have anything to say other than it is not funny and not good, I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about whitewashing and cultural appropriation and why those things are bad. For those of you who don't know, whitewashing is casting a white actor in a historically non-white role. Examples in include Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's, Laurence Olivier in Othello, and Peter Ustinov and the rest of the featured Chinese cast in this movie. Whitewashing began as blackface and yellowface along with exaggerated characteristics that played into stereotypes. It evolved into blatantly erasing the race of that character. Examples include Scarlett Johansson in Ghost in the Shell and Emma Stone in Aloha. Both are white women portraying women who are supposed to be Asian. Whitewashing is bad first and foremost because you're erasing that race and its history. You are also getting rid of representation for minorities, which is so important. Look at Black Panther and how important it is for young black kids as well as black adults. Black Panther is so important and it proves that diversifying your cast and having that representation can be successful. Hollywood's full of crap. Whitewashing tends to go hand in hand with cultural appropriation, which is not the same as cultural exchange, assimilation, or acculturation. Cultural appropriation or misappropriation is when a dominant culture adopts elements of a minority culture with the presence of some kind of colonial element or imbalance of power. Cultural appropriation or misappropriation is a violation of the collective intellectual property rights of the originating minority culture, meaning the original culture has property rights or rights over what they have created and culture appropriation is taking pieces of those and violating those rights. It's also very important to understand colonialism, which is when elements from a minority culture are taken, adopted, copied by a dominant culture and used outside of their original cultural context, which becomes obviously very disrespectful to the original culture. Examples include using Native American symbols for sports teams, using religious symbols on jewelry that you do not have beliefs in, and getting tattoos on your body in other languages that you do not understand. That is all cultural appropriation. Eating at a Japanese restaurant is not cultural appropriation. Making their food, opening a Japanese restaurant as a white person, that's cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation is bad because it erases a history, a culture, it takes something sacred to them and makes it a tacky gimmick or a piece of clothing or a trend. You cannot appropriate the dominant culture because that culture is considered the norm. Rachel Kuo does a fantastic job explaining this in her article. I've linked it in the description along with my other sources so you can read in depth about these things and educate yourself because I highly recommend educating yourself. It's very important to know all of these things and what they are before you judge them and uh, learn to understand. So yeah, this film, awful. Even without the whitewashing and the cultural appropriation, even if they didn't have those things, it's a bad movie. It's not good, it's not a good one. Not my, Bill Walsh, no. Even the author of the book didn't like the movie. He thought it was bad, <laughs> he didn't like it. So it's not a good movie, I'm giving it a zero, negative 10, negative 100, just a bad, the worst score. The, like, Boy With Flu With Condors was bad, Guys, I think I would actually rather watch that, honestly, because this was just, it made me upset. So, and the Boy of the Condors was just bad. So this is just not good. I highly do not recommend this. Do not watch it. Educate yourself on whitewashing and cultural appropriation. Instead, our total movie count is. Parents at Tone Cry Connors are the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and I'm not in charge of you are, so you do, and don't be this movie about it. <laughs> Take the hour and a half this movie is and read up on whitewashing and cultural appropriation because that's more productive.